This is a very interesting story. Solid state battery manufacturer who are a partner with Mercedes. They were originally going to build a battery factory costing $6 billion in the United States, but now they've changed their mind. They're going to build it in France. They're blaming Americans for the reason they've made this decision, as in the general American public. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers and welcome back everyone else. Solid state batteries, are they the future? I think many of you know what I think on that. I think they're not, categorically not. I believe this factory could even be a waste of money altogether, but anyhow, who knows, I could be wrong. I could be wrong on that. $6 billion, that's a lot of money to invest on manufacturing what is basically a pilot technology. I mean, there's no evidence yet that this technology can be rolled out en masse in EVs. It's really a big leap of faith. It's a huge investment. I mean, imagine you know going to a movie studio and saying, we want to make a movie. It's going to cost $6 billion. We don't know if it's going to work. It could fail completely. It's never worked before, but let's just give it a go. That's essentially the situation that Prologium are in right now. And they think there's too much risk involved in building this mega solid state battery factory in the United States because they say that Americans don't want EVs. They claim that in Europe, more than 50% of the general population want an EV. They don't want anything else. They just want an EV. They say in America, only one in four, only 25%, meaning less, less than half of Americans versus Europeans want an electric car. That's an interesting statistic. I'm not convinced that's entirely true. I think one of the things that could be lacking in the US as well is some level of education. I mean, maybe a lot of people just don't understand the benefits. I mean, the thing is though, when you walk into your local Walmart or your local hardware store, whatever it may be, you look in the aisles where all the power tools are, the average bloke does this, the average guy, right? And I mean, you just have to see big changes. You know what? I walked into my big, massive hardware store. There's one petrol powered mower and there's 15 electric ones. Lawn mower, I'm talking about. That's how quickly things are changing. So I think people's mindsets change very, very quickly depending on availability of product and affordability. But like I said, also education. So Prologium, they're going to build a mega battery, solid state battery factory for US $6 billion now in France. And they're getting US $1.65 billion in grants in the R&D phase from the French government. One of the first factories for mass solid state battery production, that of Mercedes partner of Prologium, will be built in France instead of where it was originally going to be in the United States. That is a conscious management decision of the Taiwanese company, despite the generous subsidies per kilowatt hour produced in the US that the US White House integrated into its Inflation Reduction Act, the IRA. So Tesla will make billions of dollars between now and 2030 from the IRA. That's one of the key reasons why so many battery factories have been announced in the US over the past 12 months. Unbelievable. I think it's about, I think it's about $60 billion. These numbers are just so big. It's sort of, anyway, I think it's more than $60 billion now of investments committed to the US based on the IRA. A lot of that going into next generation lithium battery manufacturing. So after the IRA signing last August, the number of battery factory projects in the US increased by 70% with most major automakers, including companies such as even BMW, who are obviously on the fence about EVs and battery manufacturers announcing plans to build in the US because if they don't, then it's going to make life very hard for them. And hey, why not do it if there's so much money you can get back in terms of subsidies? That number includes Tesla, who will expand their Nevada, Fremont, and Texas 4680 battery manufacturing capacity, as well as build a lithium refinery on the Gulf Coast. They're currently building their own lithium refinery, trying to control the entire process. However, Jill Normand, who is the president of Prologium in Europe, said America is just not that much into electric cars as Europe is. He said at the end of 2022, battery EVs in Europe made up more than 12% of new car sales. In the US, that figure was half of that at 6%. 
plus around 50% of European customers project themselves as having an EV, while in the US, it is only 25%. Now, I'm not sure where he's getting his numbers from, because not all surveys grew that. Um, obviously, EV sales, by the way, are higher than that, quite a bit higher than that in America and the US, in the US and in Europe this year. And of course, people's mindsets are changing. I've seen some surveys in the US that say 50% want them. Really depends on where the survey is being done and who is actually doing the surveys. But I understand the sentiment though. Tesla, together with its battery supplier Panasonic, are projected to lock in a windfall of more than US $40 billion in government subsidies over the course of the IRA's incentive program, more than $40 billion. Asked about the US government's largesse, Mr. Norman acknowledged that it is very tempting to build in the US right now, unless you are a startup that needs to front the factory money. Now, this is where the challenge comes in. They need a front, they need, they need money at the start. And that's where Francis come in and said, we'll help you with that. The IRA is very generous and you can get much more incentives by amount that you can in Europe. But there's a fundamental difference between the two. The IRA kicks in once you start selling kilowatt hours. You have to shoulder the initial investment to build your gigafactory, start producing and start selling, which typically takes three to four years. Now, here is the advantage that Tesla have over companies like Rivian, over Lucid, over small startups. They have a big advantage because they have the cash to get started. Those other companies, not so much. In Europe, however, Prologium got a US $1.65 billion grant for as early as the R&D phase, and this is money it can use right now. Now, this is a big risk, though, for France, for Europe, because they may never get this money back. This, this company may not, this product may never actually become commercially viable. It may never sell en masse. So it's a huge investment into a company that may not actually be making anything in 2030. Its solid state battery breakthrough technologies though, do include the first cell with 100% silicon oxide anode, as well as the so-called large footprint lithium ceramic battery or LLCB design, according to the assistant VP of Prologium, for the same space as the mainstream 2170 EV battery pack, the LLCB packs volumetric energy density can be nearly doubled. And for the same total energy, the LLCB pack weight can be cut by up to 115 kilograms. Those figures are mind blowing. I don't know if they're true, but if they are, absolutely. Now, if they are true, this does change the game. But the key question here is still cost. Can car manufacturers afford it? Can consumers afford what it will cost to have these batteries in their cars? The truth is nobody knows. France clearly is willing to take the risk. I'm curious, what are your thoughts on this? Do you think solid state batteries will play out between now and 2030? What percentage of EVs do you think would have a solid state battery in them in 2030? I think it will be, if any, less than 5%. Thanks for watching.